Just like with the NES, Nintendo needed to put a Mario game in the release library for the original Game Boy. As we've seen before, launch titles always hold their quality forever and keep that top 10 spot for the console's entire run. That was sarcasm, if you couldn't tell. This being Mario's first jump to the handheld platform, pun intended, there was going to be that good chance that something big would fuck up. It's the obvious point, so first off, I will say that the game being in black and white is the least of its issues, since its art design makes up for that limitation by itself. One of Super Mario Land's bigger screw-ups is that the controls were lost in translation, as the crisp, tight controls of the original game were lost for something that feels loose and weird and that will throw you into all these deaths that could have been easily avoided if the damn jumps cooperated. And one of the other thrown out players on this team is the Fire Flower because for dumb reason 71-L, Nintendo decided that a great idea would be to replace the Fireball's bounce for some sort of diagonal bullet that ricochets off of everything. The game only allows you to throw one Fireball at a time and if Mario misses his shot, then he gets to enjoy the spectacle of the damn thing flying all over the screen for 10 seconds before getting another crack. And then there's the fact that there's no visual cue for Mario getting the power-up, which just confuses all the players. Thanks for turning one of the biggest table flippers in the series into Super Mario Land's biggest joke. Then there's the problem with the console itself that caused the entire Mario concept to be shrunk down to this tiny pixelated version of the original that makes the player have to relearn how to play Super Mario Bros. instead of keeping the same visuals and in the end makes the bad porting of the original Super Mario Bros. even more obvious. It's a damn shame that this game craps out on so many levels in order to make it fit on the Game Boy, because Super Mario Land also has a host of great ideas. First off is the amazing side-scrolling shooter sections that aren't even kneecapped by the limited controls, and have a perfect balance of enemies and puzzles that make these two levels a fun challenge, and should not, under any circumstances, be completely forgotten. Bring this back, this was amazing. Later on, we get to see that one of the Game Boy's launch titles had a spectacular soundtrack that showed me the Ruins music from Smash Bros. Brawl's Subspace Emissary wasn't just made up on the spot. Also, the levels were incredibly unique, going for pyramid levels, Easter Island levels, and even some sort of Asian Dynasty level right at the end that gave a rare spark to a game forced to be monochrome. However, the one thing that will forever seal Super Mario Land into the back annals of the Mario series is the fact that my playthrough for this game clocked in at under 40 minutes. I cannot believe that Nintendo sold this thing as a full product when the entire game is completed after a dozen levels. And this thing isn't deliberately Super Mario Bros. hard to get back that playtime because every level ends with an easy bonus for extra lives, making it a cakewalk to get to 4-3. The game simply doesn't have the difficulty, the compelling gameplay, or even a major villain to get the people invested in its existence, and I would recommend playing it only for the expertly done ship shooting levels. Otherwise, it's a beautiful game that fails to grab its audience in any particular way. Let's just finish off this black and white cliff note of the series with a final scoreboard. And a victory for gamers, dripping in genuineness. I'll see you guys next time for another spin on the Retro Bus.